Hello beautiful souls, Victoria Amador here from Soul Healing Tribe and today I want to talk about ancestral healing and why should you care? So this is going to be a topic that is going to hopefully give you a lot of ahas and a lot of deeper understanding of why really working with our ancestral lineage to heal and connect at a very sacred level is going to potentially awaken something within you that you haven't experienced before. So our bodies have so much information from the beginning of time through our bones, our cellular structure, the blood, the DNA, and everything, right? We have everything that has happened in our planet, our ancestors, ourselves through past lives, other lives in other planets and so on. So I know that sometimes this is a little hard for some people to understand, but just stay with me until the end. So hopefully this can make sense by the end. You know, when people do Akasha record reading, they go to, we tend to go to the Akasha film and we pull information. But, you know, I, I was wondering, we have all of this within us. Do we really go to the Akasha or do we tap in within ourselves to really experience that plane of existence to pull everything but it's not pulling it's awakening that within us so it is a process right and according to dr berg from I, I, he has a youtube channel you can check it out eric berg he um, did a really good video on epigenetics that I really liked because it was simple, it was straight to the point and only a few minutes long. So one of the things that he was saying in that video is that the DNA structure is a blueprint, which basically has the instructions to build this body. So one of those strands of DNA make copies and eventually goes to the nucleus, goes into the cells and sends information to create the proteins and the proteins tells the body how the body tissues and so on how to basically structure the way so the genes are basically giving information to the body to the cells to the proteins and so on to create this body and through epigenetics we know that the genes are passed down generation to generations it's been proven since I think the 50s or 70 something years. But our ancestors knew this for thousands of years before that our ancestors and their ancestors pass gift, pass information, knowledge, and experiences, lessons based on the experiences that they had, that they experienced, right? The stories will be passed down and pass down and when in some cultures we know that when an ancestor was getting ready to transition there will be something ceremonies done in order to transfer the gifts from one generation to the next so our ancestors knew that their ancestors passed information to them and that that information created the opportunity to awaken and really work with certain gifts that were really developed in the family lines so that the next person will become really advanced really fast. So mentioning that because I think throughout time we have lost a little bit of the sake, well, a lot of the sacredness that comes with really tapping into the ancestral line. And in some of the cultures that I practice, that I belong, that I was initiated in, we, we have the uh, responsibility and, and the opportunities to work with our ancestors in a way that is very beautiful. But I think sometimes people use it just for benefits. What can I get out of this relationship? What can they do for me instead of what can we do for them? What is it that we can do for them? And when we start putting ourselves in that role of 
I see you, I respect you, I honor you. And because I see you and I respect and honor you, I know that there are things that were not great that maybe I can work now. And sometimes we do it because we're so spiritually inclined, but the more that we awaken into the possibilities that this epigenetic thing is a real thing and that therefore, because of epigenetics, I have traumas from my ancestors, wounds that I couldn't integrate, that now is my responsibility to integrate because somehow those traumas, those wounds are part of who I am and are affecting me. And the deeper you dive into this, the more it will make sense. Because as you go through your journey, you start realizing that there's some things that you wonder why you do it, why you think in such a way, why you see life from such lenses, right? So when we start opening ourselves to that possibility, things really start shifting for us and we start getting those ahas. Oh, wow. And you start hearing the stories from mothers, grandparents, great grandparents. And you're like, wow, I didn't even see that coming. So if our thoughts, right, can affect the way that we compose ourselves. Imagine what the genes that are already encoded, encoded within us can tell our body to do and to perceive itself in a way that may not be in alignment with who you really want to be. And when this happens, of course, you know, that's going to affect also our thoughts because we know through, through how we see ourselves, we have certain beliefs that are created based on how we obviously see ourselves. And because of those beliefs, it basically is a loop, right? So some of those genes that have that information of the wounds that is that my ancestors, your ancestors and so on, the collective and so on experience, will be able to tell the body and the cells and the DNA and the neurons, how to communicate with each other in a way that it creates a reality based on the wounds that we are experiencing. I hope that makes sense because I know it can be a little confusing. So if everything we go through inside of us, imagine how much access we have to the information through the genes and through the collective experience of our ancestors and through our understanding of spiritually how energy works, we know that there is no way to deny them that our ancestors are basically alive within us, not as people, but as information that we hold in our bodies that creates the way that I see myself, create, creates a certain perception of the way that I see myself. So that's, does that make sense? So if I start experiencing life through the wounds or the gifts of my ancestors, the lives that have deep connection with earth, with others, that are able to do mystical things, very beautiful spiritual gifts and so on, I can also start awakening those gifts at a deeper level just of course as well as the wounds that maybe they had to experience while they were alive because basically at the end of the day what we are integrating in this life what we decided to take on when we were planning this life before being born we were planning this life and we were having those meetings so imagine meeting with your ancestors and the ancestors, generation to generation, pass positive things and things that were traumatic that they couldn't integrate in the moment. Perhaps they realize the things that they did once they transition, so there was no chance of integration. Or maybe they couldn't integrate because they had to survive. And to survive, they couldn't integrate it because it was too much. So, the things that they couldn't integrate are the wounds that we carry forward for this life and the beautiful gifts that they had 
are also available to us so that we can work through the challenges of holding the burdens of those wounds so that we cannot break because some, some of those traumas are really, really, are very heavy. So we come equipped with the capacity to sustain the burdens without breaking ourselves, right? Without breaking so that we can integrate, so that we can have the courage to hold to the wounds until we're ready to start integrating them. And when we have those, that information encoded in the genes, and depending on the environment inside the belly, after we're born, in childhood, infancy, right, teenager years, early adulthood, and so on, those wounds may start coming online, start getting activated within us. Because now we have the energy or we may have the environment pushing us to activate those genes faster than we were supposed to because maybe our environment is really messed up. Our parents, grandparents, whoever. So those genes are there and they may get pre-activated beforehand because of the environment or activated when the right time comes for whatever reason because it's time now to start working on them so it is important to know this because sometimes people are like i just don't understand why i had to go through so much and i know for some of us it's a lot but the only reason why you're still here and you were able to make it through is because you had something within you letting you know that you we're going to make it, you are going to be fine. So at a deep level, there are parts of you that have the resources to work through those wounds. And when you get to the point that you can release, accept and release those wounds, then you can shift your energy in a way that you can then allow a lot of light, your true essence to come true and be united with you at a point that you are more light than the wounds that you have carried, if that makes any sense, I hope it does. And the way I like to see this is because it, this helps me integrate the mystical and the spiritual with this reality, because I always like to find that balance. And our nervous system is that part of us in our body that has a lot of this information and tells, tells my brain, my blood, my emotions, what to do and how to do based on what my nervous system is picking up on. So the nervous system has this capacity to hold the information of our our own individual self, our ancestor, our collective energy, family, and so on, right? And so our environment. So the nervous system is picking up all of this information and responding and reacting in a way. So when we have a lot of trauma, the nervous system may be in, on overdrive. It may not be able to distinguish one thing from another and therefore sends the signals to the brain, to the amygdala and so on, to respond in a way that may, be, that may feel like it's being threatened because it's, it cannot read the information properly because it's overloaded. So imagine adding ancestral and collective information to the nervous system so now you have amplified what the nervous system have to deal with to the point that it is in chaos. And that's why sometimes people feel a lot of anxiety and so on, because it is a lot sometimes. It really is a lot. So my genes are telling, which is basically the DNA, one part of the DNA is the genes. Besides that, there are other parts that compose the DNA structure, but the genes within my DNA, 
that are my DNA, are telling myself, my body, what and how to be. So because of that, not only I have the genes, but I also have the nervous system responding and receiving information from in and outside of me that are telling my brain how to function in a way that creates thoughts because maybe my nervous system is not understanding why I feel the way I feel. I haven't had the time to really contemplate and sit with myself so I know what it feels inside of me. So I always think it's outside of me. So the moment that we start the healing process and we start going in, we're like, whoa. That's why the healing process really do work, does work because we start going in and we start understanding what happening, what's happening inside of us. And when we start doing that work, naturally our true essence comes on the forefront and gives us the information we need to heal what we need to heal so that we can receive more light because we are pure light, but because of the wounds that we carry and the burdens, light cannot get through it because it's almost like putting a stop to it. It's a shadow aspect there that needs to be brought to light. So what happens when we have all of this unintegrated information from ourselves, our past lives, other lives, ancestors, collective, is that the, the light that is supposed to be within us cannot get in. So it has to wait until we work through releasing, accepting and releasing those burdens so that the light can come in. So once I start the healing process, more light, more energy starts coming in so that I can feel wider, whole, more expansive, wiser. So this healing process is really is beautiful because we get to start working on the possibilities of allowing us to understand and accept what our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on went through that may still be affecting me. If it's not affecting me somehow and I don't have a response to it, then that means it's integrated. But if I have a response, something within the, their experience, the potential experience that they experience still triggers me. Or maybe it doesn't trigger me because it's so terrible that I cannot even conceive. So it's a hard experience to conceive so that I feel numb to it. And if I feel numb, that means I had to put a shield not to feel it. So don't get in your head thinking, oh, it has to be something that I, that I feel an emotional trigger to. Maybe the emotional trigger is that I cannot feel because it's so chilled that I cannot feel what is possible, especially with people in our lives that may still be alive, parents or grandparents, uncles, aunts, that it was so traumatic that I can no open myself to film. So I have to disconnect and numb myself, protect myself. So don't get thinking I have to have some sort of fear or hate, disgust, shame or something. No, it can be so difficult that I cannot feel anything so I am dissociated, I am removed from it so that I don't have to feel because it's, it, then it, it will be too much to feel. I hope that makes sense if you're thinking, I don't feel anything. Because sometimes when we don't feel, that's because it's way too much for us to feel so that it creates dissociation within us. And if you have issues with dissociation, maybe because some of the experiences that you went through were so hard that you have to protect yourself. And you might have this shield protecting yourself so that you don't feel what it feels like to be that part of you or to be that father, mother, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-great-great-great-grandparents that went through what they went through. Immigration, war, fear, famine, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, being a bad person, a killer, a psychopath, whatever it may have been a warrior, a soldier, queen, goddess, whatever. 
there are always pros and cons to every story. So the parts that affect us are the parts that are not integrated, that we cannot have not been able to integrate. And they didn't integrate because it was too much for them. So they passed it in a form of a challenging, a gift. The challenge is to carry this burden and the gift is to overcome it and become someone new as a result of carrying this burden and working through accepting and releasing. And now let me tell you the most difficult part sometimes is the acceptance part. To accept that perhaps I was a bad person. Perhaps my mother was a monster. My father was a monster. Perhaps in a past life, I was X, Y, and Z, or I was abused sexually, physically, whatever, or that I was a demon, a monster, that I have done the worst thing that I could possibly think, that I have been the things that I hate the most. And to allow myself to accept that perhaps in a past life, I committed suicide because I couldn't carry whatever I had to carry in that life feelings of loneliness, separation, abandonment, not being loved by someone that I loved dearly. Maybe I was a bad mother, a bad father, and committed a crime and killed my own child. Maybe, whatever you maybe was, or it is in this moment, what is the worst fear that you carry? And accepting that that could be coming from a past life or from ancestors. Recent, long gone ancestors, thousands of years old, gone ancestors. The acceptance part, it is so crucial because we cannot heal what we cannot accept. Let me explain what that sounds like, what that looks like. Sometimes I have clients that they want to release and they force themselves to release, especially in spiritual ceremony. Purge, purge, purge. But they haven't accepted, seriously contemplated and accepted, not from the air, but from the heart, that they have been or, or they have experienced the pain that they have experienced. So they try to run from the acceptance by running to the release. And the acceptance is crucial because we cannot release what we haven't accepted. And to accept, it means we have integrated, information has been integrated within us in a way that we can now cure. Cure meaning, you know, have you ever notice that cure and curious are coming from the uh, cure and curious curious come from the cure why when we're curious we start the healing process curing what that is curing the the reasons the the parts of us when you start being curious you start contemplating what is there? Where does that lead me to? When I am in a healing session and I feel X, Y, and Z, or when I'm meditating, or when I'm driving and out of nowhere I feel this emptiness, or when I'm looking for someone, for that partner that is going to love me because I feel that that person is going to make my life better. Why? Maybe because there is a part of you missing. A part of you that says, I'm lost, find me. But you think I have to find that in somebody else. I'm going to go looking for a partner. So that part of you that feels like it's a part of me is gone and you haven't noticed. So I'm going to give you the hints. But the ego self says, oh, it, it must mean that I am missing someone, another person. But in reality, it's the part of us that we have lost due to past experiences. And sometimes it can also be the wounds that our ancestors carry that they couldn't integrate. And sometimes those wounds 
have to do with losing people in their lives that they couldn't integrate the loss of a child or a husband or a wife or whoever. So, or, or a parent losing a child, a parent as a child and being adopted by somebody else that treated me pro very poorly. Or maybe they treated me so well, but I still miss my mother. So I was an orphan and I was taken by somebody else. These things that our parents and grandparents and great grandparents and so on went through are wounds that we may still be carrying. And when we start the ancestral healing process, it becomes a journey of acceptance, releasing. But before we release, we have to accept so that we can integrate it, so that we can release it properly into the light, so that then we can allow more energy of our true essence to come in. And what this looks like, imagine being completely a black um, cartoon, like completely black. And maybe there are points that are white of your true essence. And the more you heal, the more percentages come online so that you feel more alive, more whole, more connected, more courageous, more vitality, more wisdom, more saying yes to life, more compassionate, more forgiving, because when you start this process, eventually you get to the point where you accept who you are, you accept your parents, your grandparents, your ancestors, because when you reject who they were, you also reject parts of you. The more you reject where you come from, the more you reject who you are. Yes, there are people that have hurt us so much, but when you are set, it also mean that you have to welcome them back into your life. You don't have to have them every day in your life, but you can accept that the experience happened. You can accept how it has affected you so that you can release it and that you can eventually get to the process of forgiveness. Because listen, if you're looking for that sort of enlightenment, I'm not saying that we're gonna become Buddha or anything like that, but the sort of enlightenment that brings us to truly accepting all the parts of who we are. We have to accept where we come from and how we got here. And that means getting to the point and walking the journey so eventually we can go to true forgiveness. Not forgetting, but forgiveness. And when we get to true forgiveness, we let the wounds go to the point that they can know haunt us anymore they cannot hurt us anymore and my true essence can come online moreover more and more and more of it can come online so the ancestors and working to forgive at a deep level what our ancestors have done that hasn't been integrated is crucial and because we have ancestors from all over, it's not based on skin color. Some of your ancestors don't look anything like you. And some of the people that you judge, some of the people that you judge, maybe because those people that die thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, when they die and they realize what they done, they curse themselves to say, I have to be the victim. I have to be this. I have to pay for what I've done. I have to suffer for all eternity. I have to pay back. I have to carry the wounds of the pain that I cause others. And the curse becomes a generational curse. 
something that you may have to work through and release. And there is no other way to find it but to dive deep into your subconscious. And you cannot do this alone. To really go deep, you have to have someone guide you through it. Because some of these things are so hidden. They're so hidden. We're not going to find them unless we're really working at understanding ourselves at a deep level. And eventually we start our healing process. We start working on us. All about me. All about me. All about me. But the more you go into this process, eventually you get to the ancestors. Where you're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. And some of these wounds are because they're yours, they're part of your genes, they're also yours. So when they're yours, you're going to work on yourself. But eventually, when you get to the ancestral trauma, you start releasing the ancestral trauma. It's a beautiful process. It really is. It's beautiful. But it can feel like a lot. It can feel like a lot because it's like, Going into the subconscious, it's like a black ocean illuminated by the moon. And when we start this healing process, the moon with the intention and the sensations and the feelings and the beliefs, we start finding those hidden beliefs and behaviors and the moon is like a focus lighting the way so that we can find those things, those experiences. And with the ancestral healing, program what we're doing is that we're navigating so that we can get to the point of assess accepting we got to get to the point of accepting so that then we can release and shift our energy to allow the new energy to come in and the ancestral gift because the ancestral gifts are covered by the wounds that were not integrated most of the time most of the time so and if they're already activated and you have really good balance of them when you start releasing these wounds those gifts flower like they blossom and you become even a stronger um healer median psychic whatever abilities you have already or that may be waiting for you it's, it's like diving into the subconscious, like diving into the multiverse. It's dark, there's stars, and the little stars are our energy. And the more we work on ourselves, the more stars can come online and bright. They become bright and you become more expansive and wiser. It's, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. So I'm going to leave it here. I hope this give, gave you, you no, know, I really hope that this gave you a deeper understanding of why working with the ancestral lineage is crucial to do a big part of our mission here. A big big part of our mission is to heal the ancestral lineage so that our descendants don't have to go through what we have gone through and what they went through so and when we start doing that process we really start connecting with parts of ourselves that we didn't know existed it's beautiful work really is divine and for those that are interested definitely check out the ancestral healing program because there is no better way to really connect and honor and respect ancestors and i know a lot of people do rituals that's just one part the other part is really honoring all the parts of who they were and knowing how to do so so that we could do it without going through years of more pain and trauma. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.